crippled chip. This video is dedicated to you. All right, guys, listen up. If you've got a big printer like this one or that one, you just hit print, wait a bit, and boom, done. But the A1 Mini, this thing is tiny, and I had to print a 304 millimeter button, which meant 12 PEI plates and almost two full days of nonstop printing. Some of you even watched live as two kilograms of filament slowly transformed into all the parts. Before I agreed to this madness, I thought building a big model was just like a small one. Yeah. Nope totally different story. And this wasn't even a massive model. But hey, trying to save material came back to bite me. Shrinkage, warping, misaligned parts. Everything fighting against me when I tried to assemble it. Until now, I thought printing on a bamboo meant zero problems. Click print, wait a bit, and boom, almost perfect every time. But surprise, surprise, reality had other plans. First came the stringing, lifted corners, and prints detaching from the plate. Everyone said, filament is wet. I dried it, and nothing changed. Turns out the problem was a whole combo meal. Yes, the filament caused some stringing, but I also had to clean the nozzle constantly. Yep, I made a short about that. Lifted corners, bed calibration. Also made a short, and even designed a calibrator for you guys. But one issue just wouldn't die. Prints popping off when they were close to the edge. PEI plate plus glue? Nope. Max bed temp? Nope. Sacrificing a gummy bear to the 3D gods? Also nope. In the end, it was the printer's nature. A1 Mini has no chamber, and mine sits right where the airflow from my house chimney creates a constant draft. I checked with a thermal camera. The plate edges were literally cooling mid-print, so I had to improvise. With this giant print, you probably saw it live. I had to pause the print and glue the support to the model with superglue. No other way. Supports always spawn near the edge, and that was the only fix that worked. You know, if I had a better printer, something like the legendary H2C, I'm pretty sure half of these problems would simply disappear on their own. That's the dream, right? For now, it's completely out of my reach, but hey, a person can dream. Anyway, back to the print. Even though every single piece of this giant project carries scars from all those issues, stringing, lifting, warping, detaching, nozzle cleaning, bed calibration, airflow chaos, one thing is absolutely certain. Nobody will ever convince me to print another one of these again. Two kilograms of filament. To me, that's a mountain of material. You can create so many different fun things out of two kilograms, and instead, I turned it all into one giant button. But well, I promise to fulfill your requests, and I keep my word. A promise is a promise. And you know what? With all the chaos, I completely forgot to mention something important. At the very beginning, when I finished the first draft of the model, the slicer happily informed me. Five days of printing and five kilograms of filament. I honestly grabbed my head with both hands like, there's no way I'm printing a five kilogram button. This whole project is proof that you should never blindly trust a slicer. The way you design a part matters so much more than people think. A well-made model can save days of printing and kilos of material. And yes, AI is getting better and better, but it still can't replace good old manual designing. At least not yet. To be fair, I'm genuinely impressed by what it can already do. But let's be honest, AI-generated models are still very easy to recognize for someone who knows what to look for. Sure, some folks will type a couple of sentences and feel proud they made a model. And that's totally fine. Everyone is good at something, right? But anyway, I'm drifting away from the topic again. Only after printing everything, when I started assembling the pieces, did I realize, oh no, I need to print the guides as separate parts and glue them in. Otherwise, I'll never put this thing together. So yes, another unexpected step. And I'll tell you something honestly. At the beginning, I thought this whole print was completely pointless, like a waste of filament time and energy. And maybe a little bit it is. But the truth is, I learned a lot from it. And I always say, it's never too late to learn something new. Maybe that's why I enjoy taking on your crazy challenges so much. Every project teaches me something. What pushes me a bit further and keeps me from standing still? And honestly, even if the print fought me all the way, 
even if it ate two kilograms of filament, even if I had to glue things mid-print like some kind of 3D print doctor, I'm glad I did it, because now I know more. And I guess that's kind of the point. All right, so let's wrap this up. This whole project, this gigantic, absolutely ridiculous 300-304mm button started as a simple viewer request. And honestly, I had no idea, absolutely no idea, what kind of adventure I was signing myself up for. At first, I thought it would be just like any other model. Slice, print, assemble, done. But the bigger the project got, the more problems started showing up. Stringing, warped corners, prints detaching from the bed, airflow cooling down the edges, clogged nozzle, calibration issues. It felt like every possible 3D printing gremlin woke up the moment I hit start. And yet, I kept going, because I promised you I would. Two kilograms of filament later, and yes, my heart cried a little. All the parts were finally ready. But that wasn't the end, of course. When I started assembling everything, I realized I had to redesign guides, reprint missing supports, glue parts mid-print, and basically play 3D print surgeon just to make this monster fit together. And you know what? As frustrating as it was at times, I'm genuinely glad I did it. Because this project taught me more than I expected. Not to trust the slicer blindly. How much proper design affects material usage. How airflow placement in a room can completely sabotage prints and that sometimes you really need to get creative, even if that means pausing a print and gluing supports by hand. I also learned that AI is getting better, but it still can't replace real design work. Not yet anyway. But the biggest lesson? That every challenge, even one that looks pointless at first glance, teaches you something. And thanks to your requests, I keep learning, improving, and exploring new ideas I would never try on my own. So yeah, I may never print a second button like this again. Absolutely not. But I don't regret printing the first one. If you watched all the way to the end, thank you, really. Your support, your comments, your challenges, that's what keeps this channel alive and pushes me to try crazier and crazier things. So if you enjoyed this journey, leave a like, drop a comment, and tell me what wild idea you want to see next. And as always, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.